from the light of Elisha's snapshots. And we look at that and we get present day and current day application that we can grow and we can learn. So be with us this coming Tuesday at 6.45 where our Bible studies and then our prayer conference call is at 7.30. It's at 7.30. Be mindful that our also our Bible study continues on Thursday night through Zoom. We invite you to participate in that as well. We invite you to get involved in the life of our studies. Go to our website. You'll get all the details, all the login information and invite a friend and just be a part. If you like notes and outlines of our Bible studies, they are also available to you as well at no charge. Just write to us, go to our website, rcgministries.org, and there you'll find places where you can leave a prayer request. We'd love to know how we can pray for you. You can get notes and outlines, request those, we'll send them to you as well. And we want you to know that it's not about us, but it's about all of us growing in the life of the church and in the word of God. So thank you all so much, rcgministries.org. And while you're there, I want to thank you all for your faithful giving. On our website, there's a place where you can certainly give by Givelify, or you can mail your gifts of love to the church, or you can give via the web page or our website, or you can text to give. You can text RCG to 73256, 73256 via the mobile app, and we will be delighted to receive whatever your gift that you want to give to the Righteous Church of God. You know, as you sow into the kingdom of God, as you sow into the ministry, always remember the righteous church of God or any house of God, we are just the we're just the receiver. We just receive your gifts, but we use them for the building of God's kingdom. So sometimes you should look at it as, oh, I'm just giving to the building, I'm giving to the church. Yes, you are, that's the vehicle. But we in turn take your gifts of love and use it for the brethren's of the gospel. So as you're giving unto the church, you're giving as unto the Lord. And then we pray that as we receive your gifts, that we would be mindful to make sure and to be certain that it's used for the building of God's kingdom. We thank all of you that so we thank God for our woods ministry. We have a ministry of homeless persons that live in the woods and we use some of our money that received to make sure that they are taken care of as we move to the more wintry time and late fall. They'll need things to keep them warm. So all that you give is used for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. So I wanna thank you all so much. Listen to us. Thank you for giving my give of I. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for even whatever you give is appreciative. Do you know we don't look at who gave this amount, who gave that amount? Because it's not the amount that we give. It's the heart in which is received. All right. Amen. But also that God has blessed you bountifully, yeah. bountifully, then you ought to sow bountifully. Amen. Because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Yes. If you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. That's what the word of God says. So we don't give to get back. We give out of obedience. And you look at what God has blessed us with. Amen. We ought to make sure that we honor God in our gifts of love. And I just want to say thank you, Righteous Church. Thank you, members. Thank you, visitors, for how you've faithfully been giving in these last two years. We managed to meet all of our expenses a little narrow at times, but yet God has been faithful. Amen. Father God, bless now our gifts of love. Bless the persons that are giving. Thank you for those that give sacrificially. We ask in a special way, God, that you would touch every gift, touch every giver. Bless and we pray for the ones, God, that desire to give but have not. We pray for those that have possibly suffered income losses in this season, perhaps are struggling in the area because of the economy. We pray, God, that you will show yourself strong in their finances. We pray that you will increase their faith. And God, we want each other, we are so appreciative because all that we have come 
comes from you. Help us to be mindful, oh God, that you don't need our finances. What you want is our faith. So we thank you. We bless you. And all that's given, hallelujah, will be used for the building of your kingdom. Bless every giver, every gift. In the name of Jesus, we lift them up for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you all so much, y'all. Praise to the one continue us further in worship as we continue on in worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Those of you that are worshiping with us by means of social media, we extend yet another invitation. We are in the Lord's house every Sunday at 11 a.m. We'd love to meet you and shake your hand. So maybe as time goes on, come out and share with us. We'd like to have you in the building so we can shake your hand and say welcome to the house of God. Amen and amen. Amen. Can we give God some praise in here, church? It's been a long week. Y'all can be better than that. Come on. Hallelujah.
with God, he answers us in his word. I'll be honest with you, sometimes I'm praying hard, as many of you are, and then we say, Lord, why don't you just, just speak, say something. You ever, you ever been that way where you're praying so hard and, and you're in the room by yourself, and you really would like to hear an audible response? No, are you, I know your answers in your word, but I got some real issues here. <laughs> I need you to kind of say something. And to be honest with you, I think if God spoke to, to us verbally, we probably would be so shocked, scared. The voice of the Lord is booming. But sometimes I'm like, you know what, I think I'd like to hear something. So I want you to know, how about just toning it down and just speak audibly. But God answers our prayer through the word. Amen. Through his word. Amen. He will direct you where to go, how to study, where to go in the passage to get your relief, to get your answer. Prayer is an attitude. I need the prayer is a, a, a coming to humility. Yeah. Prayer is a lifestyle. Yeah. What I'm saying is, you ever leave, Lord be with me today, protect my children. Now you're out of the house, you're gone, but you're still praying. 
Lord, I need thee. Protect me on the road. When I get to work, have things settled down. It's an attitude of prayer. It's a lifestyle. It's ongoing. Prayer should not be something like, oh, by the way, I forgot to pray. It should yeah. be something as a believer. It's a conversation. It's something that we do on a regular basis to talk to God. We have a weekly prayer call, as many ministries do. And this is, this is my personal opinion. Sometimes I just wonder, if persons gather on the prayer call, just out of habit, just out of a routine? Is that the only time that we pray is on a prayer call? Now please, we welcome, we're glad persons are there and we need to do that. But I'm wondering our prayer should extend beyond the conference prayer call. Yes, yes. Yes. Amen. The prayer requests that are lifted, do we ever make a note of those that need prayer? Do we pray for them after the call is over? Do we lift those names up in our personal prayer? In other words, prayer is not just about us and your own and my own individual. It's about all of us. There's the burden for prayer. Now, we got to be careful because we got what I call crisis prayer. You know what a crisis prayer is? Oh, I'm in a mess. You haven't talked to God in a couple of hours, a couple of days, a month. I'm not sure what your prayer schedule is, but some persons will only call on God in a crisis. Now seriously, when something drastic happens, then we offer what I call a, a crisis prayer. And then we get upset with God. Because he doesn't come with the ambulance, the fire truck. He doesn't come with everything you need to deliver you from your situation. And God is like, gee, I haven't heard from you in so long. We need to have a relationship with God. Amen. So a medical or a prayer crisis is good to call on God. I just want to say that we need to call on him. But we can't wait till there's a, a family emergency or medical condition or career situation or your relationship is going down the tubes or you find out something about your child that you never really wanted to know and now we're praying. Sometimes God allows things to happen so we can pray. All right, all right. But we need to be praying continually. The message today is entitled Continue in Prayer. The pursuit of God in a conversation. So not only this pursuit in prayer as we continue, then we need to be the persistence, what I call continue consistently consistently continue yes. to always in Luke 18 and 1 and he spake a parable unto them to this end Luke, that men are always to pray mm -hmm. and faint not First Thessalonians says pray without ceasing Amen. Amen. one of the weapons that a believer has is prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's one of the things that I don't want to speak globally, but it's probably one of the things that we least activate the most as one of our weapons. We can continue in prayer. We have to be persistent. There's a passage in Luke, and this is not in my script. I'm going to go from memory. I'm thinking it's in Luke. I'm not sure. But the parable goes, there's a man that had visitors coming to his house. And it was late, but he had no food. 
He had nothing to give them. So he goes next door to his neighbor who has a store and he knocks on the door and he keeps knocking. And the man answers and said, go away. It's nighttime. My family, we are in, in bed and, and we can't give you any bread right now to feed your guests. But the man was persistent. He kept on knocking. He kept on knocking. Finally, the man got up. I'm going to give you what you want because in the nest, in a sense, you're really getting on my nerves because it said because of his importunity. All right. That's All right. the, because he kept asking. Because he kept knocking. Because he kept pleading. But he had a need. It wasn't a personal need. It was a need to help somebody else. Sometimes our prayer requests can't solely be about us. When we pray, we say, Lord, I, I need you because I need this so I can be a blessing to somebody else. So he said, and Jesus said, because of his importunity, it's the only time their word is used in the Bible, importunity, his persistence. If we get persistent with God, keep asking and praying with the right attitude, with the right purpose, Meeting the criteria, answering prayer, not for our glory, not for us to be bigger than what we are, but to give God the glory. So we have to be persistent in prayer. Put a footnote here. Mama used to tell us all the time, I'm not going to give up on y'all. Y'all are driving me crazy, but I'm not going to give up on y'all. I'm going to keep on praying. They had two brothers, and we were real bad. And they had two sisters. They were kind of okay because they were girls. But the boys, mama used to say, you all, if you don't straighten up and fly right, right. you're going to get in trouble with the law. But one thing she did, she was persistent yes. in her prayer. Yes. She would get on her knees and say, Lord, save my children. She would get on her knees and say, Lord, bless their lives. Yeah, yeah. While we out doing everything else, mama and dad were praying. Yeah. And that's good news as we reflect today. Somebody was praying for you and I. Amen. When we weren't thinking about church, thinking about God, somebody was being persistent in praying that God would deliver us and keep us and keep us safe. While we look at all the dangers on the street, the killings, the mass murders, and the drive-by, we ought to be praying every single day. We ought to be driving in a row, Lord, have your way. We pray, God, that you bless my children. While you're driving, Lord, don't let nobody run the red light. Lord, I pray that no drive-by shooting. We ought to pray and be persistent. Lord, cover my kids in school. Some of my teenagers in college, bless their roommate. We pray. Be persistent in your prayer. Bless his name. When you're persistent, God knows you're serious. He knows that what we, it's the importunity. He knows we're serious. Then there's the perception. Persistent in verse 2. Perception in verse 2. And watch in the same way while you're praying. It says in Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray Amen. that you enter not into temptation. My Lord. For the spirit is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh yes. is weak. So verse 2, it says, and watch in the same. While we are praying, we need to be watchful. The perception in prayer is we must watch. While we're praying, need to watch. Yes, sir. Mark 13 and 3 said, take heed, watch, and pray, for you know not when the time is. Amen. The perception of prayer. While we are praying, we're also watching. Ephesians 6, 18, pray is always, pray always with all prayer and supplication. 
supplication. Watching supplication of all the saints. So not only is it the pursuit of prayer, we must be persistent in prayer, but there's the perception of prayer that we have to watch as well. But then there is the praise in prayer. Because verse 2, and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So while we're praying, we can't be complaining all the time. Thanksgiving, praying, when we pray, it takes out selfishness. Thanksgiving prayer removes doubt in God's faithfulness. Thanksgiving prayer eliminates covetousness. Thanksgiving prayer ensures us that we're not praying to consume it upon our own lust. Let me say it this way. When we pray, Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, thank you for delivering me from me. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free from myself. Thank you, Lord, for empowering me to do your will. And when we pray with thanksgiving, we're praying to say, Lord, not only do I have a request, but I want to thank you for what you've already done. Yes, yes. Because you could have destroyed me. You could have taken me out. But here I am, I'm praying. And not only do I have the needs and I want to be persistent, but in my prayer, I want to give you praise and say thank you for delivering me. All the time, God has been good. We shouldn't go to God all the time just as of a serious need, yes. But sometimes we just ought to have a prayer of thanksgiving. Sometimes I say, Lord, you know what? I'm just going to thank you today. I'm not going to ask for nothing. I'm just going to say thank you. And I make a conscious effort to say thank you for last night's slumber. Thank you for waking me up today. Thank you for my family. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for food. Thank you for clothes. Thank you for multiple cars. Thank you for health and health. Thank you for food running out the closet. Thank you for food and clothes all over the place. Sometimes we ought to say thank you, Lord. And when you start thanking him, you remember that is nothing that we deserve. But it was God that blessed us. It's God that gave us the job. It's God that gave us the education. It's God that makes the way. I have no way. So when you pray, make sure we couple it. Thank you, God. Thank you for your Holy Ghost. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your resurrection. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Make sure we have a praise in our prayer. Because God inhabits the praises of our people. Sometimes when we pray, sometimes just stop asking for stuff. Just put stuff on the side. There's always going to be stuff. But sometimes, bless his name, sometimes you got to think and thank him for answered prayer. Lord, I pray and you answer. I pray and you heal. I pray and you deliver. I pray and you brought me out. I pray that you make my enemies my footstool. I pray and you showed up. You blessed my life. You healed my body. I thank you, Lord. And it had not been for you. Right. 
prayer. Continue in your prayer. Continue in prayer. When they cuss you out, continue in prayer. When they lock you out, continue in prayer. When they turn their back on you, continue in prayer. If it doesn't go right, continue in prayer. And then he say, thank you, Lord, that I didn't lose my temper. Thank you, Lord, that you kept me. Thank you, Lord. You gotta have prayer, praise. Yes, sir. Now prayer. Worthy, worthy. 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 Always say, Can I get an amen? amen? Can I get somebody to pray with me? Amen. Can I get somebody to say hallelujah? I know you don't have to get emotional. I get emotional because it's personal. And I don't know how you act. That's up to you. We don't judge nobody. But when I think about it, when I think about what the Lord has done for me, I want to shout. I want to run. I want to get real loud because the Lord is answering prayer. Preach it, Yes, it is. He's worthy. He says, of my people, Woo, Jesus, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. And pray. And pray. And then turn from their wicked ways. Come on. Lord, have mercy. When we pray, God is answering. Yes. So why? Why do we pray? All the stuff that's going on in the community. Got inflation. Gas going through the roof. War in Ukraine. Political party conflict. Wrong is trying to become right. Am I right about it? Wrong is trying to become right. We got shootings, robbery, carjacking, locked in our homes, won't go to the supermarket. Why? Wow. We need to be in prayer. Yes, sir. Think about it. We need to be in prayer, constant prayer. We need to pray for boldness. Amen. We need to pray that we can walk in our anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got to believe that God answers and hears our prayer. I like what it says in verses 5 and 6. We pray. Why? We want to walk in wisdom. Yes. That's why we pray. Yes. So we can walk in wisdom. Yes. Yes. So people outside can see how we handle ourselves. Walk in wisdom. Yes, sir. Redeeming the time, which means it's not going to be as long All right. as it has been. We got to pray, y'all. Why? Right. Look at verse 6. So your speech yes. will always be with grace. Hallelujah. That's why we pray. Yes, sir. Seasoned with salt, mm -hmm. that you may know how to give an answer. To everyone. That, that's why we pray. Yeah, yeah. That's, why, that's why we pray. So we can have wisdom. People outside can see God. Because time is winding up. And I like verse 6 because it let your speech. You see, this is where you know we have a little issue. Yeah, I give you a piece of my mind. And last week we talk about the world is watching us. Yes, sir. They're watching what we say. They're watching how we're at. And sometimes they're not judging us. It's just observation. Right. It's what they see. Yes, I'm not judging you. I see what you're doing. Uh -huh. My love. Season our words with salt. That you may know how to give everyone an answer. So what are we saying today? Continue in prayer. Be persistent in prayer. Amen. There's the perception in prayer we must watch. There's the praise in prayer. And then there's the partnership in prayer where with all pray also for us. That's in verse 3. So while you're praying, verse 3 tells us someone else is praying with you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're not by yourself. Thank you, sir. But you know what? As we continue in prayer and we need to always remember God is listening. He really is. I'm like you all. I wonder. I know 
he hears me. You know he hears you. Yeah. We know he hears us. Yeah. But I'm going to be honest. Come on, Lord. I done been to you a hundred times on this. Amen. Amen. Am I right about it? Yes. I done lifted this child up since he was eight. Mm-hmm. Now he's going on 28 or 30 years. And we get to the place where we think God is not listening. But he is listening. Yes, sir. Yes, yes he is. Amen. And he's working it out. Yes. And see, when God works it out, it's finished. We can't hurry God with our requests and our impatience. Yeah. We cannot. We've got to trust God. And I'll be the first to admit sometimes our facts challenge our faith. Sometimes they look around and say, Lord, how long? How long will you allow this to go on? How long will the wicked keep prospering? How long will wrong perpetrate us right? And we pray and we fast. But as we pray, we are encouraged. Because as we pray, God talks back to us. Through the word, he says, I've got to read my word. I will keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind is staying still. Because he trusted in him. When you pray, he'll speak back to you. Through the word, no good thing. Will he withhold from you, from them that walk to right you before when you pray and you accept, the word says, fret not thyself because of evil doors, they soon shall be cut down. He'll speak to you through the word. He'll give you comfort in the word. He'll give you peace in the word. If we continue in prayer, bless his name. Hallelujah. Bless the name of our Lord. He's worthy. Father God, in the name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. We normally have prayer at conclusion, but I want to pray for those that are listening by means of social media. We want to pray right now. You continue with prayer. Pray for the bereaved. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praying, oh God, for family members that are hurting. We're praying today, oh God, for children that have strayed away and have no regard for your word. Oh God, we're praying in the name of Jesus. We continue to pray. We continue to fast. We're praying with persistence. We're praying, oh God, and we're praising you, thanking you, but we're praying. Come, we're praying right now. We lift up fractured relationships in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We pray for those that are sick in the name of Jesus. We pray. We continue in prayer for our seniors. We pray for in the wind. We pray for that shepherd. We pray for all of our sick and our shudders. We pray for the teenage sickness of sickness cell. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We continually pray in the name of Jesus. Heal our community. Heal our government. Heal somebody's house. Heal somebody's home. Almighty God, you are a strong tower. You are El Shaddai, you are our provider, you are our sustainer, you are our healer, you are our way maker, you are our joy and sorrow, you are our hope for tomorrow, all our hope is in you, oh King of glory, we will continue to pray, we will continue to call on your name, we know that you will answer, we know that you've already answered.
If you God bless you, see you Tuesday, 645, right here next Sunday at 11. God bless you.